Um, now, I will go ahead and preface this lesson with um, the bottom line, uh, loading and saving, representing entities in Magento. EAV, we, we, it, it feels very similar to um, the regular simple entity models. That's how the system was designed, to really take some of the sting away of having to manage all this stuff. So, <clears throat> I'm going to walk you through some things and tell you lots of stuff that, again, is very much background information that you don't need to necessarily know. It's not essential for you to know um, in order to work with entities, uh, EAV entities, but if you do know this, then, of course, you, know, you just get a little more insight into what's going on behind the scenes. So, if you need to go deeper, that's kind of the goal of this lesson, is to give you a starting point. So, models, EAV entities, well, the model that we deal with in the front end, so something like catalog product, well, just like even a, a regular model, a regular simple entity, that extends from core model abstract. The difference is the resource model will extend from some sort, ultimately extend from mage EAV entity abstract. In the case of, of catalog entities, so products and categories, there's actually another um, EAV class which extends from this, and then catalog and product entities extend from that class, just because there are some, uh, there are certain sets of uh, utility methods that are necessary for those. So, all right, um, get attribute, walk attribute, add attribute. So these are funny things that you can do uh, through, uh, <clears throat> through the entity. So through a, a, a resource of an EAV entity. Um, get attribute will actually get you that, that attribute model. So from there you can find out the meta information, you know, back end, front end, source, and all sorts of meta information about it, okay? Walk attribute, well, you can go through and have the callback function to uh, the, the two that are important here, um, then add attribute, which would be adding, you would use that and add an attribute to that entity. Okay? We'll be doing this in just a second. Okay, this is, this is uh, Donna was asking me about needing to add a, an attribute to the customer entity. That's often the case. You have uh, some remote system and you have to store some ID. Well, the thing to do is an upgrade script. It's very easy. Uh, we'll be doing that in just a moment. So uh, the nice thing about doing that via an upgrade script instead of having developers run SQL is that it's versionable and consistent so that, again, when developers check out code, they just by simply installing an instance of Magento in their development environment with that upgrade script present would also set up the necessary attribute to entity association in the database. Okay, so <clears throat> EAV entities, um, just like we were doing earlier with models, with our, our flat, regular, plain old vanilla models. Um, we have our entity model extending core model abstract. And again, we call init and specify our resource model. Now, inside our resource model, ah, we have to set up our type, our entity type. And this will actually connect with the type that's defined in the um, EAV entity type table. Okay, this is uh, again necessary for, um, this is just an additional step that's necessary for our, uh, that, that meta connection between entities and attributes. So what does this then mean? Well, with our, um, let's see, with our regular load process, very simple. So we start with our model, we call load. Well, that calls resource model load. Resource goes to the database. 
gets these values, assigns them to an array, assigns the array to the model. EAV is a little more complex because we have to deal with uh, all these different tables and all sorts of different scopes. So model load loads the EAV resource model. And then the EAV resource model has to load all the attributes to get access to the attribute source models. And then what we do is we go into each of the tables. Right? So we have all these different tables, all these different sets of results. But the nice thing is, once the data is pressed back onto the model, it's nice and flat. Okay? So we still, uh, for, uh, you know, for core store, so for core store, if we say, if we were to load this, if we were to pass this into get model and call load with some ID, well, we could then call um, you know, store get code, and that would get us the value from the code column for this record. And if we have something like, like a catalog product, and we call load some entity ID, we call product get code. Yeah, that would work for a, for a text value. So that would get a string. Now, that came from a completely different table than the entity table for catalog product. But that's the nice thing about what's going on behind the scenes is Magento is uh, gathering up all this data, discovering everything from the EAV meta environment, and gathering up all this data and pressing it into a nice array structure and giving it back to us. Okay, that's the point of these slides. If you want to see what these kinds of queries look like, so here we're saying, okay, um, first thing here, so select EAV entity, not from EAV anywhere, EAV entity. Okay, so this would be a load. Actually, no, this would be um, this would be just getting the static attributes, so we wouldn't be loading here. So this would be internal uh, to say a collection object before we actually call entity load. So that would actually go out and get all of our EAV data and do all the joins. So this would just return static attributes. All right, just the uh, catalog product entity, for example. Just the information from that table. None of the other attribute values from the other table. So uh, this would then be... Uh, the attributes that, so that entity's attribute set from the entity record, well, this is how we would get all of the attributes on that. So here's the information where we're joining the attribute and then uh, joining the labels. And here we're doing it by, let's see, I forget what entity type ID 9 is, but um, so some entity type and some attribute set. That's what filters out the results. So. Um, once we get into this world of, it, of joins with EAV, that's why EAV is much more expensive in terms of, of processor and complexity. All right, so these union selects, this is then how, um, how the data from each of the entity tables is gathered. So the bar card, the text, the int, the decimal. So if we're actually loading that entity fully, requesting all of the attributes for that entity, <laughs> it's done via these, these uh, union selects. Now, I think you have a note in your book on this page, do you? Yes. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Heed it well. <laughs> uh, basically what happens is if you change types, 
So let me see. A site that we inherited once was um, had, uh, an attribute had previously been is it a decimal? I think it had been an integer. And then the type was actually switched in the database to decimal. I think that was the order. Uh, the, the side effects, so if you ever have, your, have the need to change data types, you have to remove the data from the original table. Uh, and that is because of these union selects. So what will happen is you'll never actually get, depending on, depending on which, which data type is selected in which order. I don't recall if this is the exact order or not. But uh, what was effectively happening was that the data we were trying to set in the admin was being stored in the correct table. But when we were loading, uh, when we were loading the, the, the data from the table, we were actually getting the legacy data because that's what was found after the fact. And I can't tell you how much money I spent of that poor fellow trying to figure that out. And, for, you know, and unfortunately for him, it was a previous developer who'd done it. Um, you know, the collection, in this case, obviously it's being filtered. So huh, we've got this one nice table here. And for EAB collections, um, actually, I, ooh, I hate this slide. Um, <laughs> yes, the slide is very confusing. Um, so when we get the collection here, we're not, we, don't have, we don't have a complete entity. That's the gist of this. Here we always have the complete entity because we get the complete record. Here we don't. Here we just get the entity record, and then it's up to us to load it to get the data from the other tables, pull it in. <laughs> Using <laughs> here uh, where and here we just simply specify other attributes that we want to gather. This way, if we, the reason why would we use that attribute to select, why would we not just load it all the time? Well, if we load it all the time, so the difference between calling load, that's going to trigger our union selects. And if we just have a, say we have several of these, well, th you know, this is going to have a lot more overhead than if we just simply add individual attributes that are then specified, passed into the query. Okay. And then you can use join attribute for, uh, in the collection for, for some more complex join types, which I don't have the time to get into. However, I believe I do have a slide <coughs> with, um, so yeah, again, here's where we are loading some data. Yeah, uh, we specified an attribute ID. Ah. And here we're specifying um, here we're specifying loading a, a loading a, an entity based on some attribute attributes value. Okay. Again, queries you don't need to know because we have these nice methods to help us. Yeah. And let's see, more of the same. Okay. So. Um, I think I have something on join attribute. If not, there's actually, uh, there are actually some decent examples in the Magento wiki. That's one of the wiki articles that's pretty good. Okay, so the EAV save process, again, not unlike, uh, obviously more complex than the regular entity save process, but more the same. So we have, again, this nice array of, of, of attribute values on those attribute codes. So, you know, name, code, shirt size, whatever. Well, when we call save on that model, well, of course, we fire our before save. And then we go into our EAV attributes. So each of these attributes is passed into its model so that the back end can be, can, can be used. We can have uh, validation methods here and get the attribute values for that entity into the correct table. That's all that happens here. That's just the extra step with the AV. So, yeah, the back end knows where to put. So the back end type sets where we're going to store information. 
right? And then there's a back-end model that knows what to test for, what to do, all right? So here, for example, we have, um, oh, we have an implode. Oh, it looks like, guess what? It looks like maybe for anything that is using uh, any, any attribute that uses EAV slash entity attribute backend array, so maybe things like, I don't know, multi-select. Um, when that's saved, that's actually going to be saved in a var car table. And we're just going to comma separate the IDs that correspond to options. This is a little, a little wonky. Um, but again, the nice thing, I mean, we don't have to do this ourselves. You may wonder why the, the storage of these, um, you know, the storage of array of, of certain attributes would end up in a var car table, comma separated. This is why. Now, EAV, regular save differences. So again, more of the same. Uh, just an extra set of, uh, an extra step in the save process. You know, we have, um, we have an object that has this, this array of data in it, you know, keys and values. We call model save, model before save, resource save. Oh, well here, I'm sorry, this is an EAV, this is an EAV entity. Well here we actually have to break this out into the different tables. Again, another diagram of what the backend type, uh, what the backend type and backend model do. I know, this is a lot of information. It makes, it's a lot more fun to work with it. Source models, well, all right, so when you have these enumerated options, well, what gets stored in the database is actually an, an integer, not you know, green shirt or blue shirt. You know, I, don't, I don't see green or blue, the option I get three or two, which is why if, for example, I have shirt size, um, excuse me, uh, if, if I, have, or let's say I have some kind of multi-select, you know, this is, this is cotton and it's made in, you know, China and all these different things. So if I pull that, if I try and get that information out, I'm, I'm just going to get some IDs or for a, just for a simple select, I'm going to get an integer value as opposed to that label that I want. Um, and these options, when they're presented to us, though, those options are rendered through the source model. And the nice thing, why would we need that kind of step? Um, well, because, perfect example, um, I might have a German store. So this might not, I wouldn't want this to be a green shirt. I'd want this to be a grün shirt. Or... Spanish store, Verde. I think that's right. Um, so <clears throat> we have to have these source models so that we get the correct, the correct label and correct options to show. And that's what source models do. So the saving of data. Kind of a bit of a refresher here. Static data, that's entity data. That's part of the record that the entity exists. That's global data. That goes in the entity table. Var car, if, if an attribute has a backend type of var car, it goes into the entity var car table. If it has a backend type of integer, well, it goes into the entity's integer table, and so forth, okay? Now, there's this backend get table uh, this is how this actually maps out here, is gives us our product, uh, our, our, our entity type, and then adds an underscore, and then int, or decim you know, decimal, date time, et cetera. I know this is, this is a lot of information, um, and that's just a total like, what? <laughs> that, that's, that's a whole lot of stuff. Um, so to kind of bookend what I was saying earlier, the EAV system, you know, EAV model, it, it's a very complex thing. We have a lot of different things that we have to do. We have to represent all different kinds of attributes 
and information about those attributes and information about those attributes in the context of the entities to which they relate. Um, we also have to have different scopes for all these different values. The point of these two lessons that we just went through is to let you know that there's all of this complex magic happening in, the, uh, in Magento's ORM and EAV classes, but just simply by extending our EAV models from the right classes, we don't have to think about any of this stuff. And then that one little pitfall with the uh, changing data types. I swear that that will probably happen to one of you at some point. And just always remember, remove that legacy data. So what would that look like? I mean, you would need to copy values over from one table like integer to decimal and then remove those old values. Okay.